the last time Stephanie came up here earlier, when they dreamed up this thing and they talked to me about doing it, we had no idea that there was this particular new American musical that was being birthed out of the brain of a certain Puerto Rican American. We had no idea how much we would love this show with all of our hearts and souls. So when we were lucky enough to get everyone, you know, all these people who are going to be coming on stage to be involved, I was like, please let me introduce it. <laughs> now, I'm not going to talk long because they don't have a lot of time to do this. What I wanted to say, there's been so much written about the show already. It is a masterpiece. We all know that. I just wanted to say publicly something that I got to say to Lynn manuel personally, which is that Jonathan Larson, my friend that I knew, He really dreamed of what could be possible with theater and how it could speak to people today. And the fact that Lin-Manuel Miranda and all of his incredible collaborators have continued that legacy means the world to me, it means the world to his family, and I just wanted to say that very publicly. So without further ado, give it up for Lin-Manuel Miranda and all much more Who's next? Yeah, Diggs. Diggs is next. I, I was, um, 
I mean, was so so there's this other thing that that Lynn and, and Chris and and I and a bunch of other people do called freestyle love supreme. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And we we had this weird gig on ESPN at the Super Bowl when it was in New Orleans when we were uh, rapping about sports celebrities. We were like freestyling live about sports celebrities, which made everybody very nervous. And, uh, I think it beats you up. <laughs> um, but Eli Man is a real sweetheart. Anyway, we uh, <laughs> um, and Tommy Kale was sort of running point. It was this totally crazy week, and at the end of this crazy week, he said. Uh, David Lynn's writing this new thing. Uh, we're gonna do a presentation of the first act in a few weeks. He wrote some really fast raps, and we only have five days for someone to learn them. Will you come learn them? I think it's in your wheelhouse. I said, I said yes, whatever. Let me let me know what is it. He's like, oh, it's this new thing about Alexander Hamilton. I said, it's a terrible idea. Send me the music. <laughs> and then he sent me the music, and it was like the most brilliant thing I ever heard. And I just like said, look, let me just tell me what I need to do. Do I have to learn how to sing and dance? How does a musical work? Just let me know. And I will tell you <laughs> I'll totally do whatever you need to, to be a part of this. That's how that happens. Paper Sue, you're next. Um, I was actually, uh, I was in the Heights, and I was getting breakfast at this place up there, and um, I got a phone call from Tommy Kale um, after breakfast. And We'd seen her in Natasha Pierre. Yes. We knew she was a star. I can see Natasha Pierre in the great comment of 1812. That's when I first met them. And uh, was in all of their wondrous talent. And Tommy was like, uh, hey, hey, it's Tommy Kale. Um, I just wanted to invite you to join us in a reading of Act Two of uh, Hamilton Mixtape. Of, of Hamilton, um, you know, you may have seen Lynn like, performing this at the White House. I was like, yes, yes, I told him to show him about Oh, you're making a show of it. That's great. That's awesome. He's like, yeah, we'd like you to play Elizabeth Schuyler. I was like, awesome. I can't wait. Great. I'll join you guys. Great. Okay, yeah, I'll see you there. Okay, bye, Tommy. Bye. And then I was like, who's Elizabeth Schuyler? <laughs> and. Soon enough, I figured it out, and I joined them on a reading of uh, Act Two. With Lynn Jr. I got a reading of Act Two. I love emails too. I got an email from Lynn um, about two and a half years ago, I guess, that said it was the, the subject was Oktoberfest. A delicious pun. <laughs> You think you're the first to make bird puns? I see you. <laughs> and um, I had the, I had the pleasure of seeing the reading that Diggs and um, Chris were part of at Vassar, and fell in love with it. Vassar, yeah, and fell in love with it too. So I said yes right away. Who's next? I think Renee's next. Hi. Um, so um, clearly they had not seen the Red movie because no one called me and offered me a job. <laughs> appointment for an audition. <laughs> um, yes, I'm a real person. Um, so, um, work. So, yeah, I, um, so I, I got an appointment for, um, from Chelsea for an audition for the workshop of Hamilton. And um, I said no. Um, to audition, to the audition. And then, because I just was had some personal life stuff that I was trying to commit to, but then I listened to the demo of Lynn singing Satisfied which is the song Angelica Schuyler sings. I don't sing it as good as she sings it. No, he does. And, um, and I just, I was done. I, I ran to the audition and thank God they gave me the job. And, uh, and my life has changed. Thank you. Um, actually, I'm in the same boat as Renee. Uh, I got, I, I didn't know any of these guys were bad, but I got actually called in to audition for Washington first, because um, Chris Jackson was doing a uh, holler for you. So I auditioned for Washington, and they kind of were like, well, we got this other guy, and they heard me leave some mulligan. Maybe you should like, just, just try it out. Um, and uh, when I, the first time I heard it, I, I just fell in love with the music. Yeah, and I was like, Hamilton, that's a dude on a 10 hour bill or something. Um, <laughs> uh, but like, the music was so dope that it was just kind of like a no brainer. So that's how I'm here. Yes! Go off to the sauce! James was doing uh, his show, Something Rotten, got fast-tracked to Broadway. And he, uh, he had to leave the off-Broadway production of Hamilton 
and Lynn and Tommy contacted me, and I was like, yeah, that'll be fun. And so then I came, I didn't know what it was, I didn't, he, I had not heard it before, and I knew Lynn from before, and then I came to see the show at the public, and I was like, I'm gonna be in that? And that's how I joined. I remember sitting next to you, I got, we watched it for the first time together, because we watched Javi, and I was like, girl, stop crying. You're making me cry. You were like, are you going to be okay? That's <laughs> the history of this squad in particular. So, have any of you guys all is someone actually typing what we're saying? Yes. Yeah. 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 They is are. Awesome, I can't believe you're doing that. That's so cool. <laughs> anyway, um, speaking of history, you and I have talked a bunch about this. There's some, you know, ten dollar bill, Shaw Piper, Wee Hawkins, probably what most of us know Hamilton for. Um, but through this musical, we've all collectively learned a lot more about our nation's history. Um, what is the one thing that you guys have learned, whether it's in the actual show or just through like reading Chernow's book or going to visit where the Schuyler sisters live? What's the one thing that you learned that you're like? Wow, oh, that's crazy, or I didn't know that, or that blew my mind. There's so many things. Well, you, I'll start with you because you've read Chernow's book now about George Washington backwards and forwards 12 ways till Sunday, right? He did have wooden teeth. The cherry tree thing is garbage. <laughs> uh, and he performed the greatest uh, gift to democracy, I think other than the Constitution itself, which was to leave it. Or the mic, Washington. Or everyone to walk away. Or everyone to walk away and give it to someone else, because the only way that it would have, the, our democracy would have survived is if he had done that. If he had stayed, it would have, it would have turned it into utter chaos. Lynn, you got to have some, you, I think when you and I were talking about this, you were like, Burr's, all the Burr's kids died, except for, except for Theodosia. Well, no, Burr, or something like that. well Theodosia and Philip both passed away before their parents. Uh, Theodosia was lost at sea uh, on her way home to see her. Um, but the crazy thing about, also, there's so many crazy Burr things. So one of the things I wish I could have gotten in the show was that Burr actually prevented a duel between Hamilton and James Monroe. Um, James Monroe is the one Hamilton thought leaked the Reynolds affair. Because in real life, it was three different guys who confronted him. And, and, and we know it's, it's Jefferson, Madison, and Burr. But in real life, it was Muhlenberg, Monroe, and a third guy whose name I forget. And, um, and Hamilton thought it was Monroe. And so they sent all these letters back and forth. And Burr's actually the one who was the mutual friend of both of them and stopped that duel. The other crazy thing that I wish I could fit in the show is Mariah Reynolds got divorced um, from James Reynolds, and Burr was her lawyer. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, there's a million things like that. I could, you know, you could write three other musicals called Hamilton and put totally different facts in. Um, you heard it here first. He's doing that next. I just like to um, kind of set her up to just talk about um, the impact of the women on on the history of our country. Um, but the beauty of um, the biography by Ron Chernow and the beauty of the, the work that um, Lynn has done and Alexander Hamilton in, in really celebrating the women and their impact on, on the men, but also on history, um, and, their, their, and the love they have for each other. And now I'm going to speak, let Philip Asu speak about that. Well, I, I mean, you, you know, you heard how I became involved. I was like, who is this person? <laughs> Right, and I think the most amazing thing was just discovering that uh, Eliza did so much in the rest of her life after Hamilton had passed. And she lived to be 97 years old. Um, she had eight children. Um, she was an incredibly resilient woman, and she established the first private orphanage in New York City. And that, that orphanage, uh, still exists, what was originally established as the orphanage still exists as a, a social service organization called Graham Wyndham. They do amazing things for children and families all over the city. And um, it has been an incredible gift that as an actor who would not necessarily know about or have a reason to have a connection to this place, I automatically do. 
And so um, it's been really amazing getting to know them, getting to know some of the, the students that are there. Um, so please check them out, Graham Wyndham, they're amazing, they do great things. Um, yeah. So then we have Thomas Jefferson, he's had his own, you know, stuff come out. He's, <laughs> he's got a lot of stuff. Yeah, Thomas Jefferson did everything. Um, I, and, you know, the more I find out, the more hilarious he gets to me. <laughs> for better or for worse, like, he's, I love the Sally Beale, like, I am like, it's a good, it's a good one. Um, yeah, no, I mean, um, I think, well, my favorite thing about how Lynn, uh, hopefully intended to paint him, because it's certainly how I'm playing him, uh, it, uh, that I think that as I learn more history keeps proving us right is is um, somebody with that much privilege, you know, somebody whose earliest memories are of being carried on a pillow by slaves, uh, like somebody with that much privilege has the opportunity and the freedom to really think about a lot of shit, man. He like came up with so much stuff. He's a totally brilliant guy and you want to appreciate and you want to love that kind of brilliance, but at the same time, totally out of touch. And, uh, and totally able to have the freedom to talk about liberty and freedom and to own 600 people. That's a crazy thing. And the, uh, the mental shift that that must require, the, the, kind of, the, the kind of just blatant disregard for humanity. Granted, it was a different time, but you know what I'm saying? You have, to, you have to be used to being handed everything to be able to not see something like that, right? And I think that's what's fascinating about it. So the more I... Um, so the, the, the more I study about it, the more the more amazing it gets. You know, his like his early crusades for dogs that turned into a crusade against dogs is like the most fascinating thing. Wait, what? He like you know came back from France was like everybody needs a dog. Dogs are great. By the end of his life, he was like dogs are the devil. Fuck dogs. <laughs> Cipher with a C and you'll die. She kills it. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, but thanks to these guys. I, um, I, I always say my proudest moment ever, I was on the train coming into work and this woman um, recognized me and she said, are you a rapper? And I said, she's like, are you a rapper? And I said, can you say, oh my she's like, I recognize you from the BET Cyber, I just want to know if you're a rapper. And I said, can I, can I take a picture with you? <laughs> Because it was just the coolest thing ever. So that, like, that's the beauty of like, I mean, I just say that's like, that's the beauty of just showing up Jonathan Groff and not, and just like, no, really, just saying yes sometimes. Like, he asked me one random day, do you want to be in the cipher? And I was like, yes. He said, you know what that is? And I said, yes. Jonathan, it's a boy in the name! I'm totally like, but the point is, like, you, you, you show up. I'm telling you this in your life. Say yes, you know? I mean, show up, show up afraid, show up prepared, but show up afraid, and you never know what's gonna happen. So, besides Chris and David, how many of you have wrapped? Oh, are you? Is that your background? Have, how many of you are like wrapped as like if this was not your first time rapping? Like, I grew up listening to hip hop, so like around, around the way we rap. Yeah. <laughs> 
Every day at Broadway Con is a blessing. Thank God for Pippa and shots be boxing lessons. Ah, uh, of what was going on. Some of y'all been here since the break of dawn for Broadway.com. Ah, uh, you've been rapping slash acting. I've been seeing the Instagram Hamilton reenactments. Ah, uh, all day I've been praying. I'ma see a little Eliza Skyler cosplaying. Ah, uh, but here we go. It's the rap. Yes, it brings it up and later I'ma give you some time. But yeah, we got a hip hop. Cause that's you and me. And when you type it on the teleprompter, don't drop a pee. Representing America. And for those still existing in your residence, don't let these people in. Immigration is bad. We got to have our borders, things like that. Like, so, how has it felt to kind of toe the line that, you know, we should learn, learn from the past, move forward in the future? I, I think the biggest um, takeaway from Hamilton is a pretty apolitical one, but gives me hope, which is that we've been fighting about the same stuff for 200 years. Um, whether it's immigration, whether it's foreign policy, whether it's when are we a state, when are we a country, um, that's in the fabric of the compromises that led to the formation of our country. And you have to think of it that way. You can't think of it as these stone tablets that came down from a high. It was a bunch of different colonies trying to figure out how they could live together and there's you know there's there's cracks in that foundation and we're always going to be figuring out how to mend those cracks um so i, I actually take great hope in that um the fun is in, in researching this sort of learning how much we've been fighting about the same thing so whether it's jefferson or hammerton jefferson or hammer time talking about <laughs> oh, Involved with France um, and the sort of state of perpetual revolution they found themselves in at the end of the 18th century, or um, you know I don't think it's lost on anyone that you know we lose a lot of characters in our show to gun violence and that isn't going away anytime soon. Um, so, um, so um, it's it weirdly gives me hope because it means oh we're not going to hell in a handbasket. We started fighting about these things, and we make strides forward and we make strides sideways, but we're, we're still talking and we're still making a thing. And how does it feel to have a fan behind you and all these people come backstage? What have they said? Well, uh, Ryan Coogler just actually came to see our show. He directed Creed. Uh, and one of my uh, favorite quotes, I read a bunch of 
bunch of interviews by him, and one of my favorite quotes of his is that um, the, the power of art, the power really of what we do is that it can change people's minds. So without, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that Lynn set out to tell you what to think with writing this show, but it does change, it, can, it has the power to change your mind about some things, and that's a really powerful thing because if it can change your mind, it can change your actions because you think, hopefully, before you act. And so to, to the power to change people's minds is, is a, a, a responsibility that we have. So it did not, you know, we didn't take it lightly that we had the chance to say something to the President of the United States while he was in our midst that could possibly linger in his thoughts as he was governing in the next couple of weeks. And it did, you know, that's how, that's how uh, the vice president came to see us just a couple weeks later. He said, I have a lunch with the man every week, and he wouldn't stop talking about your show, so I can't. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, that's just the, it's a, it's a remarkable thing. It really is. Um, and yet, right after this, I think, um, the original company of Rent is going to be on the stage. <laughs> Um, and I know a lot of you have ties um, with John Morrison's musical and his music. Uh, Lynn, you, the, you and uh, Leslie did Tick Tick Boom together. I think uh, Rent was your Broadway debut, Renee, you too? No? It wasn't my debut, but I, I had the privilege of being in the closing cast. I saw you closing night! You did. Amazing. Um, do you, any of you want to just share a couple words about Rent, the musical, what it meant to you, either growing up as a kid listening to it or being in it, or...? Well, I will say um, it's, it's one of the kind of crazy things about this experience for me is being in this opening company of Hamilton and having been in that closing company of Rent. And, you know, just thinking of the legacy that Rent had and the, the roles, the, the things that this company, people that are about to walk on here, you know, what, what they set up for us so far down the road. Um, and um, so, yeah, I, I think about that a lot with this because, you know, this is so much bigger than us sitting on the stage, even here. You know what I mean? This is something that will live like, so long ahead in the future. And so you wonder, like, in the show about, like, the legacy of your involvement in it. And, and when I think about that, I remember how it felt when we finished and we bowed on the stage for the last night on Broadway of Rent. And then that original company, walked on the stage um, that moment when they when they walked out there with us and we sang that song together. Uh, it's just, um, so yeah, and that, and that similar thing happened with the chorus line when we had the, um, the privilege um, to be at the public for the, for the 40th anniversary to be standing there when they walked out on the stage. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about you guys all being here today. It's just the communion of like souls in a space and what that, that how humbling that is. And um, so, yeah, and when you just said that, I didn't know that the rent, original rent company was coming out right now. Um, and it's, uh, and I'm kind of a fan right now. I'm like, kind of like, oh my God. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel um, really blessed that I'm, I don't know who's going to sit in this chair. <laughs> because there's something, too, when I got, when I got to the Nederlander and I started, there's something that they leave behind. An original company, there's something that is in the wood that they leave there of themselves. It's a, it's a, it's a legacy, it is a tradition, it's, you know, they, 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 they show you how to do it. And so you are quite literally walking in their footsteps. I walked in Rodney's footsteps, you know, who came to see our show last That's night. Right. And um, yeah, they, they, I love the quote too, that you know, an artist spends their whole life trying to get back to the place where their heart was first opened up. And there's, without a question, that is the show that opened up my heart. And I haven't felt that way. Lightning round. I'm going to start with you, Debbie. I'm going to go down the row, and then we're going to go to Oak, and end it that way. Okay? What's the best thing you've heard at the stage door? Uh, the best thing I heard at the stage door. Uh, my favorite, my favorite thing to hear at the stage door is I love clipping, and then they're like playing that screeching ass rap music on. <laughs> I was like, I love clipping. <laughs> 
three of y'all know what the fuck that's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What's the craziest thing you've heard stay short? Um, uh, will you write this down in your handwriting because I'm going to get the tattoo of it? <laughs> I have terrible handwriting because it's terrible. Uh, Renee, thank you. I mean, I just find it strange to walk, you know, walk out after, you know, receiving something so great personally and then somebody says to me, thank you. Um, something strange, which was amazing in itself, was that someone asked me to sign their face. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's a permanent marker, it might be a little bit toxic. Um, so I didn't sign her face, but I signed her arm, but then I found out that everybody else signed her face, and I felt a little bit bad that I didn't. <laughs> thing that I've, I've heard is um, a lot of young uh, Asian American women coming up to me and saying thank you for representing Asian American women. This happens every other show. Benny, you are great as George Washington. <laughs> Can you please hit it? We would like to go out and have a little bit of 
Excuse me, yes I know. 